So I got this computer on the side of the road. I don't really know much about it. Here is the power supply. Not that much I.O. And quite a few expansion cards. And I'm assuming that power supply is dead. Let's take a look inside. That's odd, there's something plugged into the motherboard inside an anti-static bag. More USB ports. It's from about 2001. That heatsink looks pretty dusty. And this case is made out of sharp sheet metal, so I don't want to cut myself. This fan isn't even plugged into anything. This is an Inno3D MX400 and that's a strange looking AGP port because it's got no index on it so it might run at a different voltage. Let's see how much RAM there is. 128 plus 128 plus 256 equals 512 and this is an Intel based system and it looks like the top DVD drive uses some SCSI interface. There's a sound card because the motherboard has no sound. Uh, extra USB ports are always useful. SCSI, Ethernet, and phone line. Over here we've just got some very basic I.O. The power supply does have a monitor output, which is pretty useful. Let's get this thing plugged in. Let's take a look. Something is doing something. What is that noise? Not this one. Looks like the power supply fan isn't spinning. That's not a good sign. Well, to be honest, I'm surprised this thing even turned on considering the power supply fan is just gone. Um, I'm really not sure where that sound was coming from. It could have been the graphics card, which also could be the reason why that fan cable was unplugged. Someone just got annoyed of the noise, which isn't the best remedy because they could have damaged it further. I should get a monitor and I'll just be using this monitor here because it is garbage. I don't care if it breaks and it barely works. It should be fine for plugging it into a questionable computer. I almost forgot um, there were two computers there. There was some HP ProLiant and I got some old Xeon out of it so not sure what I'm gonna do with it. I might sell it. I might add it to this computer here if it has the right socket and even though these power supplies aren't that good what I do like about them is this right here so you only need one cable going to the wall you can plug in a cable like this to power a monitor okay the monitors on it's making some beeping noises now followed by more rattling. Is it safe to say that this is completely cooked? The power supply fan just started working all of a sudden. So that's good. Take two. I reseeded the RAM and the graphics card. And there we go. We have something on the screen. It's flickery because we're outside, but there we go. Now I've got red. That's the problem with this monitor. Uh, I'll set the, there we go. That's a little less bad, but yeah, it, it actually works. I don't know why the CPU frequency is set to manual, but, uh, probably just the default in the BIOS. So I'll get a keyboard and take a look at this um, with less sunlight. 
sounds like I was releasing a demon there for a second. Fixed. Two out of three sticks are dead in this computer. Um, maybe chip configuration? S yeah, SD RAM. That, that was before. Um, um, yeah, what a piece of garbage this computer and this monitor is. It's like a match made in heaven. Um, PCI. Um, it doesn't really say much about the computer, which is a shame. Power up control hardware monitor. Well, I mean, it's not overheating, that's good. The voltages are somehow in spec. Um, I am changing that power supply because I don't trust it one bit. And I'm going to be replacing it with this, a slightly stained thermal take light power 500 I know it's not the best I could be assured that the fan won't fail and it won't just cook itself to death and yes unfortunately it doesn't have that nice monitor output but at least it's a bit safer look at this uh, at the bottom there's a sticker that shows that this cost back in the day $90 it's 250ATX, so I'm assuming that's 250 watts. Well, if I could read, it says it right there. Um, yeah, and this is really basic with the cables it comes with. A 20-pin motherboard connector, four Molex connectors, and a floppy disk connector. So, yeah, signs of the time. And this thing is made out of this weird metal, almost what a pole would be made out of. Um, looks like it could rust pretty easily, but hey, looks like it hasn't, so don't care. And while we're at it, let's take a look at what is actually inside. Always be careful when opening up high voltage electrical equipment because there could be some dangerous voltages still inside even after it's been unplugged because of capacitors and just by taking out these screws I can already feel that they're cross-threaded from the factory so that's not good I expect this thing to be empty because it is pretty light. I found the spider. And I'm back to remove this dusty heat sink and... The way you remove the fan is by getting a screwdriver and then prying it off. Um, of course they don't do this now, but what used to happen is that the screwdriver would slip and then you'd break something, which isn't the best outcome of trying to remove a heatsink, but hey, guess I'm going back 20 years. Uh, moment of truth. I can confirm that is a CPU. And I can confirm that is old. And this CPU is from 2002. It's a 1.3 gigahertz Celeron, and it uses the same socket as a Pentium 3, even though it's later than a Pentium 3. And that is pretty dusty. That is pretty dusty. What I'm taking from this is for the other computer is a Sound Blaster Live. Both of the top DVD drives are SCSI, where the lower one is IDE. Um, 
the BIOS sticker is on the PS2 ports for some reason. Never seen that before. Uh, there's two fan slots at the front and two at the back, which means this thing is good for case airflow. Uh, it's, it's really ugly though. I mean this, I don't mind some beige cases, but something about this silver and just the way it looks is just appalling. Uh, like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.